You are on your throne. You are God alone. Help me sing and right now, right now, in the good times and bad. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are God alone. Oh, from the
His first love of a God never see. Yes, Lord. His mercies. His mercies Again, this morning we celebrate your faithfulness. Thank you for the privilege to come into your presence this morning. We thank you for your mercy and your steadfast love that will not cease. Despite all the things that are happening around us, Lord, we return every praise and glory to you. That you and you alone will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And the saints of God will say, Amen. Beloved, it is good to come into your home this morning and to fellowship with you. We thank you for always encouraging us and all the texts and the calls and the messages you've been sending. It is well appreciated. And to the children, I want to believe that you've done your assignment. I'm sure that by next Sunday, a link will be given to you where you can upload your answers, your videos, and all. And so this morning again, today the church is celebrating Palm Sunday. What did I say? Palm Sunday. You will tell me why it's called Palm Sunday. And so you will tell me why. And again, the second assignment is tell me how many books are there in the Bible. And so next Sunday we will see again. Now we have five assignments. So you are going to submit when that link comes off. Again, because Palm Sunday by the churchman's tradition is the beginning of the Holy Week. And so by the mercies of God, you understand we are not coming from the, the sanctuary. We are coming from <laughs> the studio this morning, uh, trusting the Lord that uh, as long as there is a, a lockdown, we will be coming from this platform. Trusting that the Lord again will be bringing his word as accurately as ever. And again, because it's a holy week, we want to come to your home again the whole of the week. Monday, there will be service at 6. Tuesday at 6. Wednesday at 6. Thursday, remember, is communion service. We'll be looking deeply into what the Lord is saying to us. And then Friday, we'll be coming at 6 instead of 10. So, you know, because of the lockdown, we, we, are, we have cut down on everything we are doing. And the Lord will help us mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'll be coming to your home. On Thursday will be communion. And so you will have to get your bread and your juice. Uh, because if I say wine, some people will take advantage of it and you know what I'm talking about. Don't look at anybody. And the Lord will help us mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. So this morning I want us to look at a few things that the Lord is saying to us. The theme of our topic is the king has come. But before I go into that message, I'd like us to understand what is going on. It looks like it's a parable. And, you know, according to the book of Hosea, chapter 2 and verse 14, he said, I will take them to the wilderness, and in that place will I speak with them. Beloved, that is the most important thing. What is the Lord saying to us? It looks like there is a dialogue between the church and, his, and the owner of the church, Jesus Christ. On a day like this being Palm Sunday, could you imagine that there is nowhere that there is a gathering? The Lord is saying something to us. There's no pomp and pigeantry that used to follow. 
we need to ask ourselves some questions. I'm trusting that this thing that is happening to us will be for good. So that the narrative of the church will align with the purpose of, of Jesus Christ. And so, is Palm Sunday? Yes, that is what we call it. But what those things that we are holding on to, the palm and the, all the ceremonies are not there. You are in your house. It's making us to see the vanity of life. You may have money, you may have connections. Of what value it is as of moment? Can I tell you? It is vain. And I want to thank God because the Bible says there is nothing that is new under the sun. Everything the Lord is helping us. And I'm trusting God that his mercy will be our portion in the name of Jesus Christ. The things you used to hold on to, the things that you are holding on to, just during the week, a friend called another friend and said, please, I am in so-so and so place. Keep praying for me. And the friend asked him, I said, but you, you, are, you have gone there. He said, is it gone you used to fight Corolla? It has defied every other. Can I tell you what it has defied? Man, it has not defied solution. Because when the Almighty God brings the solution, the story will become history. Amen? All he had defied is what men have put in place. He had defied our best technologies, our best medical teams, everything that man has called best, so that man will not glory, but man will come to the knowledge of the true God. For the church, like I said, it's a dialogue between Jesus and his church. What is he saying to us? You know, it's like, if you look carefully to the book of John, chapter 4, from verse 1 through to 20, you understand what I'm trying to say. John's gospel, chapter 4, from verse 1 to 20. I'm not going to read. But I want you to, because you have enough time after the service to go through. There was a dialogue between a woman of Samaria and Jesus Christ, representing the religion we have. You know, like our church, I see some people who say, oh, where's the screen? Where's all? Where's the air condition? At? You know, the Lord was dialoguing about the competitive spirit in his church. My church is better than yours. My denomination is greater than yours. Where are you now? Can I hear you? None of those things matter. Can I tell you the honest truth? That's the dialogue. You know, Jesus told that woman. He said to the woman, if you knew him who was asking you to give water, you asked for the waters of the living water. And in their discussion, the woman said to her, but this is how we ought to worship. This is how, this is the prescribed order. I don't want to talk about anything. Let's remove the speck in our own eye in the chapel. This is the order of service. This is how it must be. There must be this and this. You know, some of the things we want to die for do no longer exist. If you, if you notice, we just cry over some things. Let me be specific. Like the nursing creed. Oh, we didn't sing the nursing creed. Where is Nice today? It's in the heart of an Islamic Republic of Turkey. Where the thing you want to die for took place. Because it wasn't in their heart. Because we have replaced the reality with frivolities. No one is exempted. The thing you are holding on to may not be Jesus Christ. All he has told us is that the only thing is Jesus. He said to the woman, now is the hour when men will worship, not on this mountain we are going to, but they will worship God in spirit and what? And in truth. If you look at the logo this morning of what the, the team that the media team has put up as the, the king has come, is representing something in your home that there's a throne to be occupied by a king. Who is the king occupying that throne? You must answer. You must do what? You must answer. Who is that king upon the throne in your home? We will look at who this king is. And so this thing that we are happening is to point to one thing that only one thing Jesus came for. Can I tell you? The kingdom. At his birth, look at what he said. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 33. Luke 1 and 
33. It says, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his what? Kingdom. When the Lord was teaching us the Lord's prayer, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your denomination come. No. His kingdom. Your pastor come. You know, on campus here, we listen to children. We see two fellowships fighting because they are saying this general overseer is better than this general overseer. This denomination is better. Where are you this morning? In your house. With who? If you don't worship him in spirit and in truth, you have lost out. So it is not by formula, beloved. It is not by what? Formula. And take for example today that we are talking about. Why should we call it Palm Sunday? What has Palm got to do with our salvation? Oh, you see many, many things. We will decorate the altar with all manner of things that were are there today. If by last year, I'm sure in your church, they didn't do those things. And somebody is telling like somebody, he said, these things are not in scriptures. I don't care what the scripture says. But this time, can I tell you the honest truth? You need to care about what the scripture says. Hallelujah. Amen. He was talking to us about tradition. You know the danger of tradition. Let's look at it and we will push forward a little bit. I'm conscious of the time. Don't worry. If you look at Mark chapter 7 verse 9, you hear what Jesus said about the, the things that are handed down to us. If they ask you, why do we do this Palm Sunday, you can't tell. He said unto them, for you, you reject the commandment of God that you may keep what? Your own tradition. Look at verse 13. That's what men have been doing. Across every denomination, this is how we will do it. We must do this, we must do this at certain times. Look at verse 13. He said, making the word of God what? Non-infest. Through what? Tradition. Which you have delivered. And so many of us are doing. We may claim to have been born again, but we are still doing it. Look at it. If you look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Peter 1, 18. It says something like this. For as much as you know you are not, you know what? Redeemed. By what? With corruptible things as silver and gold, from what? Your vain conversation. Received by what? By tradition. From who? From our fathers. This is how, you know we have fathers, our fathers of faith. But the traditions have been given to us. Do we, those things don't count for our redemption. You know, look at what the Lord Paul was writing in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Giving us a very strong and solid warning, even in times like this, that the Lord is speaking to us and saying, these things you are holding on to is nothing. The only thing that is, is, is going to stand is only the kingdom of Jesus. He says something. Beware. Help me. Least any man spoil you. Through what? Philosophy. And what? Vain deceit. After what? The tradition of what men. Ask them, where did we get this? Sirs, can we find this in scripture? We will follow. But if we do not find it in scripture, what shall we do after coronavirus? The Lord is speaking to his people. After the rudiments of this war, and not after who? Remember at Mount Transfiguration. After the overshadowing of the glory, there was only one person remaining. Don't forget that earlier, before that time, Elijah appeared to Jesus. Moses was there. And they were overshadowed with the glory that said, this is my beloved son, listen to him. Like we said last Wednesday. And you know what happened after that? Peter was saying, shall we build a tabernacle here and remain here? The Bible says he doesn't know what he was talking about. And then when the when the cloud lifted up, there was only one person standing. Who? Jesus. If you are holding on to anything outside Jesus, beloved, can I guarantee you one thing? You are holding on to counterfeits. It does not matter what men call it. It doesn't matter the name you have given it to suit it. Like today we are celebrating Palm Sunday. Why do you call it Palm Sunday? 
What has Pam got to do with your what? Redemption. This is why we are where we are. The Lord is tired and is calling us to speak to us comfortably and say, my people, can we return back? You know, God was wondering so many things. If you look at it, if you remember Jeremiah chapter 2 from verse 11 through to 14, the Lord had a, con a conversation. He said, had a nation changed their gods, which are yet not God, but my people have changed the glory for that which does not profit. We are pursuing vain things. We are, we are pursuing our kingdoms, our denominations. Nobody is after Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. He said, be astonished, all ye heavens, at this. Be horribly afraid and be very what? Desolate. Say what? Say the Lord. Look at the next verse. It says, for my people have committed two what? Two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of the living water. Remember that was happened? The woman was conversing with Jesus at the, at the well. He said, I, you don't have anything to draw water from this well. He said, if you know, I will give you the living waters. He said, I have hewn system, broken systems that cannot hold water. The Lord was amazed at things that were happening. He said, is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why is he what? Spoiled. The Lord will help us. I said the Lord will help us. So because of tradition, you know the Bible talks about some things. That he said, they that worship the Lord will worship him in spirit and in truth. And Jesus said, the word I speak unto you, according to John chapter 6, 63 and 64, he said, the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And in verse 64, look at what he said. He said, but there are some that believe not. Jesus is speaking. What is he saying to the church? Come back to me. Focus on the king. Let's push forward a little bit. You know, why do we need to listen to God? He said, for, he said the spirit gives light and life. He said, for the letter kill it. Most of the things we are following by tradition is by letter. And it's killing us, killing the church, killing an assembly. But we are holding on and willing to die for it. No. Beloved, I say no. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Let's forget the surface. Let's move on to the heart of the substance of what actually happened today. It will interest you to know that all Jesus was talking about was about the kingdom. He says, seek first the kingdom. And what? Every other thing will be what? Added to you. That's the first thing to seek. He remember when he rose from dead in Acts chapter 1, verse 3 and 6. All he was talking about was the kingdom. Everything Jesus, the Bible says, and he began to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He sent the apostles, say, preach the gospel of the kingdom, and then heal the sick and deliver the oppressed. Everything outside the kingdom. It's not what God is talking about. That's why here we say we are what? A kingdom-minded people. Let's follow him. The Lord has never left us. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank God for the believers here. Corona is bringing everybody like he did to Jehoshaphat. He said, what shall we do? We, know, know, we don't have solution. But our eyes are on you. It was then he told him in 2020, believe the Lord God and believe the prophet. You will prosper. I'm praying that as you believe the Lord this year, you will prosper in the name of Jesus. We have cleared the issue of fear. We are moving on to what the Lord is saying to us. And we are going to pray this morning. I want us to understand what actually happened on today that we are celebrating. It is very, very important if we miss this one, then we're in trouble. And the Lord will help us. So I want to read for you to see some things in the book of the gospel according to Matthew 21. I want to read from verse 1. I know we have read that in second, uh, first reading and second reading. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem, they were come to Petfage unto Mount Olives. Then sent Jesus to disciples, 
saying, go into the village over against you. And straight away you shall find an ass tied and caught with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If any man say unto you, you shall say, the Lord had need of them. And straight away, what will happen? He won't argue. Oh, may God give us understanding. May he give us understanding of what I'm talking about. He said, and this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by what? The prophet. Do you notice if you go to the John's book that we read, you will understand something. That he was weeping for Jerusalem because they didn't understand. Look at it. Go to that book of uh, the gospel. John's gospel. I know. Luke, Luke 19, 28. See how it started. And that was why he was weeping. And when he does, had thus spoken, what has he spoken? He was telling them about the kingdom and the king. Expecting them to understand what he was saying about that day. It was like a normal day like this. But the prophecy was to be fulfilled and they didn't know it. They didn't understand. So it was in the days of Noah. When, you know, Methuselah was, what it means is, the day, the day I die, the rain will come. Or the year I die, the rain will come. And all these years, he was, they were saying a very long, long, long period. Until Noah entered the ark. I mean, until Methuselah died and Noah entered the ark. Nobody understood. So it is in our day today. That we don't fully understand what God is saying to us as a people. We don't really get it to understand that the Lord is saying something to us. This day we are celebrating that the king has come. But who is this king? Let's, he said they didn't understand. Even though people were singing, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. The king has come. He has just finished telling them a parable of the king and the kingdom. They failed to understand. Hey! He sat down and looked at the temple. That's the temple they were, they were taking pride for. He said, when the, when the enemy finishes with you, you will understand. The reason is that you did not understand what has happened today. I'm praying that you will understand the seasons and the times today in the name of Jesus. If not, there will be trouble. Great fulfillment of scripture was going to take place. Religious men were fighting him. Hey, keep, tell your children to, I mean, tell the children, you know all these kind of things you do. He said, come on, keep. He said, if these children will keep quiet, the stones will begin to take your place. My prayer is that stone will not take your place in the kingdom of God. But who is this king? You know, if you look at where it started from, it's a prophecy that says, if you go back to the book of Zechariah, let's look at it together. Look, look at the purpose of today. In Zechariah chapter 9, let me start from verse 9. Because verse 8, he gave a very wonderful prophecy that we may be looking at during the week, especially at communion service. He said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion and of Jerusalem. Behold, your king does what? Comment unto thee. He is what? Just. And having what? Salvation. Lowly riding upon an ass. Not a horse. There is a purpose for that. And upon a cord of an fowl of an ass. How did he know that there will be something like that? And because the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is what? There is power. That's why I told them, it says... When I say to you, when do you get to that place, you will meet this and meet that. Why was he able to say that? The earth is the Lord. And what is fullness thereof? We are coming to pray with those scriptures. So whatever belongs on the earth, it belongs to him. So he said to them, go there and tell them. Lose them. If anybody challenges your authority, tell them you have the backing of the king. And what happens? Because the word of the king is powerful. They will let you go. That's exactly what happened. He acknowledged his kingship. 
that that is the one who will reign with just and salvation he will bring. This morning, will you allow him to ride into your house? That throne in your house and in your heart, will you enable him to be your king? You know, if you understand the kingdom and it becomes your king, it takes over your life. I say what? It takes over your life. I want you to understand, time will fail me, to begin to show you some things about the kingdom. There are certain things that are not allowed in the kingdom. There are certain things that are allowed in the kingdom. So you need to understand that he's coming as a king. He didn't come as Palm Sunday. He came as what? The king. Once king comes, what does he come to do? He comes to do what? To rule and to do what? And to reign. Is he reigning in your life? Is he in charge? Or you are doing everything like they said in the book of, of uh, Judges. He said, and ev there was no king in Israel. And every man did as he pleases him. You know why you are doing everything that pleases you? It's because you don't belong to the kingdom. And there's no king over your life. Look at what the Bible says. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Let's look at it together. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Say, don't you know the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor what? Adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with what? Mankind. You know what? It, if we come to modern translation, you are afraid to call it what it is called. Next verse says what? Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor rivalers, nor extortioners shall do what? Inherit the kingdom of God. Look at Ephesians 5 and verse 5. Ephesians 5 and verse 5. Look at what it says. For this you know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man, who is what? An idolater. Had any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Next verse. Look at what scripture says in the next verse. Let no man do what? Deceive you with vain words. They will tell you it doesn't matter. Oh, you are saved and you are forever saved. You are still in adultery. You are still in fornication. You are a thief. You are an embezzler. No way. Say, because these things come at what? The wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. What follows in the next verse? Be not ye therefore what? Partakers with them. Verse 8. It says, for this is what we wear. Because the Bible says, you know, it said, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. There are certain things that can be found in our tabernacle as children of God. Romans 14, 17 says, Romans 14, 17 says, it says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but what? Righteousness. And what? Peace. And what? Joy. Where? In the Holy Ghost. Will you allow him to reign in your life? There are consequences when he came to reign. You know, God had intended for Israel not to have another king but, but him. And they decided they were going to choose other gods. I mean, like other nations, they will serve like their kings. God said, okay. But what I have intended to be is to be your king. And this morning, the Lord, in this Sunday, we are celebrating a new beginning. He wants to be the king in your home. Not only in your home, he wants to be the king in your life. Who is this king? Let's look at it together. If you turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalms, I want to sh show you when he comes, what happens. Psalm 2. I want to begin to read from verse 1. Psalm 2. So why do the hidden rage? The, he the people imagine a vain thing. That's what we're trying to do. Go ahead. He said, the kings of the earth send themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, saying against anointed. Look at what he says. 
Let us break their bands asunder, cast away their cause. We don't want to live as if God is existing. Our science can provide things for us. Our connections can do things for us. No, when we plan to do great things, we have men, the, thing, the technology is there to answer every question. Except one, that water can wash away. You know, they say the best answer to corona is to wash our hands. Yet, the submachine guns can't arrest it. Executive orders can check it out of now. They can't legislate it out. The judiciary cannot sentence him to death. Where are we? Our mathematics, our computations cannot find the equation for him. The, the chemicals can, but say, they say, just wash your hand. Doesn't that tell us something? He said, he that seated in heaven shall do what? Laugh at them. Please, can you hold on? Let's see what the message translation says concerning this verse 4. Quickly. The message translation says something. It says, he and Trongo breaks out what? Laughing. At first, he's, he's amused as what? Their presumption. That we can presume we can do without God. We can go on without him. He doesn't exist. We deride him. We do everything against him. Can we go back to that verse? <laughs> verse 5 in King James. Let's so that we can... Say, he that sits in heaven, I mean, then shall he speak unto them in his wrath. Verse them in his own displeasure. Verse 6. This is God talking. Say, yet, yet, have I set my king upon what? My holy hill. Where? Zion. Who is this king? Lord, go ahead. I will declare the decree the Lord said unto my Lord, thou art my son, the son, the son Jesus. Not just a prophet. He is the son of the living God. There was confusion one day. The Lord called the apostles. He said to them, Who do men say that I am? They began to say he's Jeremiah. Some say he's another prophet, Isaiah. He said to them, But whom do you say that I am? Peter some of them not the courage say, Thou art Christ, the Son of what? The living God. Until you acknowledge him as the son of the living God, there is trouble. He is the son of the living God. He is the king that God has set upon the mountains of Zion. Let's read on. Hallelujah. Psalm 2. Psalm 2 and verse 6. Sorry. Psalm 2. Um, say, yet I have set my king upon my holy hill. Zion. Verse 7. I will declare a decree and I said unto me, thou art my son, this day have I begotten you. Let's go to verse 8. It, then he said, ask of me, I will give thee the hidden for the inheritance. The uttermost earth for thy possession. Look at what he says. Thou shalt break them with a the rod of fire. Thou shalt dust them in pieces like a potter's vessel. It says what? Be wise, therefore. O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Verse 9. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice, what? In trembling. That's what the Lord says. Look at what he says. Kiss. Who? The son. Kiss who? Embrace Jesus. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. He says, else, God will be angry with you. That's what the Bible says. That God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have a balance. He said God did not send his son to condemn the world but that through him the world might be saved. Meaning he said this is not the condemnation if you refuse Jesus Christ. Kiss the son. As you prepare to make the king take his place in your heart and in your home what is the benefit? Let's go to Psalm 24. I'll read verse 1, then jump to verse 7. He said, the earth is who? The Lord's. The fullness thereof. The wall and everything that dwell in. That is why Jesus said, go to that place. Lose 
They ask, if anybody queries you, tell them the king has spoken. And you and I knew that when they went there, they asked him the same thing. He replied. So you should be able to reply your circumstances with the word of the king by saying it is written. This is what the king has spoken in our kingdom. The question is, do you belong to this kingdom? Except a self, the man be born again. He cannot do what? See the kingdom of God. He didn't say your denomination. Nobody is saved by any denomination. Look at verse 7. He said, lift up your heads. Open the gates of your home today and your heart. What a privilege. That you are starting afresh this morning. On this glorious Sunday that the king has come. Your story ought to be different. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Say, lift up your head, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye what? Everlasting door. And what? The king of glory shall do what? Shall come in. Can you say, Lord Jesus, come in? Look at what he says in the following verse. Verse 8. Then they ask this question, who is the king of glory? Ha, ha, ha. Look at his CV. The one who is strong and mighty. The Lord mighty what? In battle. He can take on anything that comes your way, including Corona. He said, lift up your head, ye gates. He will lift them up, ye everlasting door. And the king of glory shall do what? Come in. Once he comes in. Remember when he went into the temple? After that, the Bible says he began to cast out them that sell and buy. He began to put the priorities aright. Oh, how I wish you understand and surrender to him. And say, Lord, I don't want to worry anymore. If it's, there can't be two captains in a boat, you agree with me. It's either you are the king of your home and your life, or Jesus will become one. As long as you are willing to be one, he will step aside. But how I wish you will be wise this morning. Look at what happens when he comes. When he comes. He said, if he comes, he will come in as the king of glory. The Lord who is mighty in battle. The one who would defeat every enemy that will come your way. Could it be we are struggling because there's no king? And we are doing our own thing. Look at it as I begin to round off. Sephaniah. Sephaniah chapter 3. I want to begin to read from verse 4. Oh, Holy Spirit help us. Sephaniah chapter 3 verse 14. Sorry. I want to begin to read from verse 14. He said again, Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel, be glad and rejoice with what? Your whole heart. Don't doubt what God is going to do. No boy or buoyant, you know. Don't rejoice too much, oh, the Lord might. No, 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 no. He said, Rejoice with all the heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Why? The Lord had taken away what? Thy judgment. He has cut out thy enemy. The king of Israel, even the Lord is where? Is in the midst of your home today. Because of that, help me. What did he say? I will see no evil anymore. I, you will see what? No evil. Once he takes his place, evil cannot come. What did I say? Evil cannot come. He said, thou shalt not see evil anymore. Look at the next verse. In that day shall be said, fear thou not unto Zion. Don't let your hand become slack. Why? The Lord your God is where? In the midst of thee is what? Is mighty. He will do what? He will save. He will do what? He will rejoice over thee with what? Joy. He will rest in what? In his love. He will be singing over you. Hallelujah. Can you imagine the Lord walking around in your house? And you think any, any madman will cross his path? No way. Just let him be king. And once he's king, he takes over. You think sickness will come? You think poverty will come? You know, like Abu say, who born monkey? You know, allow him to be king. Allow him to be king. At time is fast spent. Uh, let's rise, let's rise. Oh, how I wish we could still talk more when the king will come. When the king will come, when the king has come, can you ask him to come? Just say, Lord Jesus, come into my home. Come into my heart. From today, be my king. Be 
my king. Be the Lord over my life. Lord, I'm not paying you a lip service. I don't want to run my life again. I've tried to run it and I've ruined it. That's why I found myself in where I am. But Lord, today, let it be on record. Let heaven be a record that you are the king of my life. You are the king who has come in today and is marking a great and a new beginning for me. Lord, I drop those things that do not matter. I, all the vain things that have charmed me most, I drop them at your feet today. Lord, be the, be the king in my home. Everywhere you are standing this morning, everywhere you are praying this prayer, maybe you are listening to it after today, I want you to know that the same grace is available to you. You know what you are going to do? You are going to open your mouth and say, let the person beside you here say, Lord, you are my king. Lord, you are my king. Today, ride majestically into my life. Defeat every foe. Defeat every foe. Defeat every enemy. Lord, you are the king over my life. I acknowledge you are my king. 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 Take over my home. I know some of you are still struggling. He will help you. He didn't say clean yourself before he comes. He will come like he cleansed the temple. He will cleanse it. He's not asking you to make your temple to be clean. Just allow him and say, Lord, I open the door of my heart unto you coming as a king. Now you can boldly say, the king has come. He said, because the king is in our midst, I will not see evil. Begin to declare that you will not see evil. Because the king of my life is the Lord Jesus. I will not see evil. I will not see evil. I will not see evil. Beloved, this morning I want us to pray. I want us to pray for our health workers. Those in the front line globally. We are hearing reports. We are hearing reports. Doctors are being asked. I want to put a cessation and say, Lord, become their defense. Show them mercy. Every health worker. You know, it's, it's, it's a terrible thing. Just two days ago, Luke was reporting somebody who had the coronavirus came to, I mean, came into the world. They didn't tell them. They were, they were hiding it. Can you imagine the danger? The young man at the border said, guns cannot stop corona. We are not kitted. Let's pray that the Lord will be a shield unto these people. That wherever they are, the, the hand of God will help them. I want us to pray specifically for the governor of Lagos State, his commissioner of health, that the Lord will strengthen them. They will not be tired. They will not be tired. Until this thing will pass over, we don't know yet. Until the Lord knows that we have listened to him, the Lord will help us. Let's pray for them, our governor and his commissioner, and everyone in the, working tirelessly to bring succor. The Lord will grant grace. I want us to pray. People are raising concern that the money raised for Corona, some people will steal it. <laughs> hey, beloved, we're going to pray that anyone who steals the money for, meant for, for this project, that the Lord will take it back from them. <laughs> I didn't say the Lord will kill the person. I said the Lord EFCC may not be able to recover it. ICPC may not be able to recover it. But I can assure you, the owner of the heavens and the earth can recover it. Let's pray that the Lord, whatever means he wants to, he will take it back from them. Nobody will be able to use this phone outside what it's meant for. Let's take a decree. Now the king has come into your home. I know there are tensions in some homes because of this uh, staying at home. <laughs> We're going to pray, Lord, let the peace of God reign. He said he comes with salvation. Let's pray that in the homes, the king of glory will reign. The mercy of God in this lockdown, the Lord will encounter you deeper. You will come out a better person. The hand of God will be seen mightily upon your life. I want you to be confident about the king. Who is in your home now? 
who is seated enthroned, the king. And let every other thing that is, that is contending with him, let him fight them. The king has come. You can't be fighting where the king is there. He is the Lord mighty in battle. He will fight all your battles. Can you tell him the battles you want him to fight? Tell him the battles you want him to fight. Tell him the battles you want him to fight. Tell him the battles specifically you want him to fight. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' name we have prayed. A prophetic confession says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. And he will preserve your soul. I want you to say, Lord, preserve me from every evil. Every evil. Every evil. Every evil. Every evil. Lord, preserve me and preserve my soul. Preserve my loved ones, my family members. Wherever they may be and they are now, that the hand of God will shield them. I want you to ask the Lord to form a protective hedge over them. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we are very grateful that uh, you, our King, has come. Not only have you come, but you've taken over. We ask you to reign. And we know where you're not allowed to reign, you will overrule. We surrender the authorities of our life and our homes into your hands. You are our Lord. We ask that your name alone be glorified. Thank you, Father. 